Well, considering this triangle that I've shown here, which does not have a right angle, so we cannot use SOHCAHTOA for it, um, so we try to use the sine law, and we want to solve for side h, which is, of course, across from angle h. So h over the sine of angle h, which is 80 degrees, that would be equivalent to side g, which is 18.7, over the sine of angle g, which we don't know nor can we find that angle out because we only have the 180 degree angle and for some reason I cannot draw a letter G here. There we go, kind of. Okay, and then that is equal to 12.3 divided by the sine of angle I. Again, we don't have angle I. So this is a bit of a problem because we don't have a complete ratio here. So this is a case where the sine law is not going to work for us. Anytime you have a side, another side, and the angle given between them, and those are the only three pieces of information, the sine law won't work, and we use this thing called the cosine law, which I have written here. Now the cosine law, uh, can be used when you know the two sides and the contained angle. It's also used if you know all three sides and no angles because again the sine law will not work with that. So those are the two cases you want to use your cosine law. It is a more lengthy kind of calculation, uh, especially for solving the angle for the angles, but um, sometimes you have to use it um, and it, it works very well. So let's look at the development of the cosine law. How does this come into play? Now, before we do that, I want you to notice uh, a couple things with the formula. I've used the letters A, B, and C in this formula, but you really could use any letters you want at all. The key is whatever letter you use here for your triangle, the angle at the end here has to be the angle across from the side all by itself on that left side. So those have to match up. And in the center, you have your other two sides and minus two times the product of those two sides. So the things in the middle stay in the middle. The things on the end stay on the end. They're like the bookends. You've got to um, have that written that way. Now, I could have these written in, in a different way. For example, if I wanted to solve for side b, I could write that as b squared equals a squared plus c squared, and then minus 2ac, so I'm keeping the acs in the middle, times the cosine of angle b, so the b's are on the outsides, and so on. I can use any letters I want um, in any order. I just have to follow the pattern. Now, we're going to develop this cosine law. The very beginning of it reminds me of the Pythagorean theorem. So if I look at this part here, um, in this case, the B squared, the B would be the hypotenuse, but that section of it reminds me of the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to show you how that fits in with this diagram. So I'm going to make some pictures here. So let's pretend angle B is not acute. It's actually 90 degrees here. Okay, that would extend this side length here. So if that were the triangle we were working with, and this would be vertex A, then we would have the case where B squared would equal the A squared plus the C squared. And um, that would work out quite nicely. However, we don't have that. That angle B is not 90 degrees. It's actually acute, which then shortens side B right here. The side B is shorter. So that's why we're subtracting a component here. We're subtracting part of it. And it's dependent on the cosine of our angle B. It depends on what this angle down in the bottom corner is. So here's, where, here's how it's going to work here. Now let me just erase some of this extra stuff that I've written on my diagram. Um, first we want to draw the altitude, the height of the triangle from A to side BC. So our height meets the opposite side at a nice 90 degree angle. We're going to label the point where it meets side BC as point D. Um, and then number two, we're going to let B to D equal X. So X is this length here. All right, now side A, I'm just going to move my diagram up, side A, which I have labeled here, side A is actually all of this length here. So then we know that DC would have to equal all of A but minus the X. So I'm just going to write that in here. DC is A minus X, which is this much here. 
and I'm also going to let AD equal H, H for height. So that will be this right here. All right, now we have two right angle triangles. So we're gonna work first of all in triangle, we'll work with the one on the left first of all, in triangle ABD, in triangle ABD, um, I could use Pythagorean theorem and say that C squared is really equal to X squared plus H squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Just to remind you that that's where that is coming from. I also know by Sokotoa that the cosine of angle B would be equal to the adjacent, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which is C. Now, if we solve that for x, x will equal c times, c times, that's just a dot for times, the cosine of angle b, or you could use brackets instead. So that's just the rearrangement of that. All right, so now I'm going to look at triangle ADC, the one on the right, the right angle triangle on the right. Um, so in, in triangle ADC, um, we have the Pythagorean theorem that we could write here. The b squared, the hypotenuse squared, would equal h squared plus a minus x all squared. And now we're going to apply our algebra skills and square that binomial, which I'm going to use the shortcut, square the first, double the product, and square the last. There we are there. And I'm going to rearrange how some of this is written because I want to start making it look like the cosine law that I've written above. The cosine law I wrote, wrote above in blue was b squared equals a squared. So I'm just going to rewrite that first. Plus, and then I'm going to write my x squared plus h squared next. And then minus the 2ax. So it's kind of following, starting to follow that pattern that I have above. If I group these, the x squared plus h squared, x squared plus h squared, we know that x squared plus h squared is equal to c squared. So now I can replace that with c squared. So b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ax. Now my original up, up above doesn't have an x in it. I need to replace that, and I know x is equal to c times the cosine of angle b. So we can sub that in, and we have b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times c times the cosine of angle b. And there's the proof of, or the development of, the cosine law. So let's work with some examples now of how to actually use our cosine law. Determine the length of the unknown side. So the unknown side in this particular example is side d. So when I write my cosine law, I want to have d squared by itself here. That means my other two sides are going to be squared and added together. So that will equal e squared plus f squared minus 2 times e times f times the cosine cosine of angle D. So I've just rewritten the cosine law in terms of D, E, and F, and now I'm going to sub in what I know, 15.8 squared plus F, which is 12.1, we want to square that, minus 2 times 15.8 times 12.1 times the cosine of 115 degrees. And then we put that all in our calculator in one big calculation. So 15.8 squared plus 12.1 squared minus 2 times 15.8 times 12.1 times cosine of 115. So for me, I hit 115 cos, hit equals, and I get about 557 decimal 64. I've just rounded that to two decimal places. I'm going to keep all the digits in my calculator and now just hit my square root button and that gives me 23.6 to one decimal place. So D is equal to 23.6 meters. All right, solve the triangle. 
Remember that means find any missing side lengths and missing angles. The only option here is cosine law because you've got your two sides and your contained angle. So I'm going to rewrite my cosine law in terms of i. So i squared would equal g squared plus h squared minus 2gh times the cosine of angle i. All right, sub the stuff in there and see what you get. So I've done my calculation here and I got I equaling about 7.9 centimeters. And now we need to solve for our angles. We can use the sine law now. We could use cosine law again, um, but it is complicated using it to solve for angles. So we're just gonna use sine law. So the sine of angle H over H, which is 12.2, would have to equal the sine of angle I because now that is the one we have a complete ratio for, uh, divided by the 7.9. So we can calculate for h, and then we can use that to get angle g. And in doing so, I got h is equal to 83 degrees, and g is equal to about 57 degrees. All right, our last example here is using the cosine law to determine the measure of angle H. So this is the case where you have all three sides given to you and you have to solve for an angle, which is more complicated, truly more complicated than finding just the, the side lengths with the two sides and the contained angle. So we want angle H, so this is side H, this would be G and this would be I. So setting up our cosine law, I want to have angle H in the cosine law, which means side H has to come first, and that's going to equal G squared plus I squared minus 2GI times the cosine of angle H. Now we're going to sub in what we know. We actually know the H is 15.2. That's going to get squared, and that's equal to 12.8 squared plus 9.9 .9 squared minus 2 times 12.8 times 9.9 .9 times the cosine of angle H. Now the reason this is more complicated is because we actually have to solve for cosine of H. These things here are attached to it through multiplication, whereas these pieces are attached by adding and subtracting. So we're going to do SAMDEB, Bedmas backwards, to be able to get cos of H by itself. I'm going to start with my 15.2. Let's get the right color here. 15.2 squared. I'm going to undo the 12.8 squared by subtracting 12.8 squared. And I'm going to undo the plus 9.9 .9 by subtracting 9.9 .9 squared. And that will equal um, this calculation here. Whoops. This calculation here. So I'm actually going to calculate that. I'm going to do 2 times 12.8 times 9.9, .9, just so I don't have to write down so many digits, and that will equal negative 253.44 times the cosine of angle H. And at this point I'm going to actually calculate this calculation here. So 15.2 squared minus 12.8 squared minus 9.9 .9 squared, and that gives me negative 30.81, and I hope I haven't made any mistakes calculating that. And that's equal to this, decimal 4, 4 cosine of H. Now to get the cosine of H by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by the negative 253.44. So you can see this calculation is much more complicated, and that's why up above I use the sine law as opposed to using this calculation. Um, so at this point, I'm going to do that division, so divide by 253.44, negative, and I get zero point, approximately 0 0.121, that'll round to 6. That's approximately equal to the cosine of angle H, and then from there, I'm going to do my shift cosine, and I get H is about 83 degrees. Huh. H is approximately equal to 83 degrees. All right, now that I've got cosine, uh, angle H, if I had to solve the triangle, I could use my sine law in here to solve for other things. Hopefully that is all making sense for you, and uh, you have an understanding of the cosine law.